And there's a couple of things that we wanted you to hear, and especially because uh, Steiny and Goo were having a lot of a conversation about Kyle Shanahan today. Yeah. And, uh, and so we did a little bit on the crossover as well. Fun to go back in time a year ago and listen to what the crowd was feeling at that time. Sure. About sure. certain players and coaches with the Niners. So, Grandy, set these up. Is this the first one is about Shanahan and just kind of a, a, a round of applause based on thumbs up or thumbs down? That's exactly what it is. Okay. Yep. So let's hear that. What kind of noise are you feeling right now for Kyle Shanahan? Yeah! No, that was pretty. That was pretty interesting. Yeah. A couple of you moaned. Oh, boy. A couple of you moaned. <laughs> what do you think it'll sound like if we do that again today? It had better sound better, even better. more boisterous. Yeah, what? I don't know what more you want from a guy who's been for the last five to the last four in pro football. You know taken, the answer to that. Well, of you course. You want him to win the last one. Of course you do. And if you want to go through the, the history of the National Football League and the Super Bowl era and count how many coaches have actually won the darn thing, it's 34. So 34 out of, I don't know, 800 coaches who have ever coached or 1,200 or 1,740, whatever the number is, he is among the the elite few who've been to multiple, and yes, he hasn't won one, but your team's in a great spot. Your roster's in a great spot. I don't know what more you can want other than win the last game. Sure, but he gets you there. Yeah. You're, a, you're able to well, fan in January and sometimes in February. You know I'm with you, but at the same time, I get, and maybe this is just kind of a there's two kinds of people in the world type of a question. I don't know if it sure. is, but... Yes, Kyle Shanahan has all of the markers of success throughout seasons. And it's maybe even if it's not fair to say, but you've got to win the big one. It's not just the loss of the big one, but there are some, some things about how he lost the big Absolutely. one. Absolutely. It's like if you just get beat by the Chiefs, you just got beat. But both times he's gotten up there against the Chiefs, it's a double-digit lead in the Super Bowl. It's a yeah. fourth-quarter lead, and then it's wonky overtime decisions, and then a public sort of thing about did he even know the rules of overtime. And part of that is just because there's so much attention on it. But, again, devil's advocate here, that's where the anti-Shanahan fan, sure. I think, is coming from. I get it, and it's the same thing as Steve Kerr when we talk about his rotations and the guys won four chips, and now he doesn't get a gold medal, but he coached the team to a gold medal, and yet all we were talking about is his rotations, and turns out maybe Halliburton and Tatum shouldn't have played because you won the last two games. So it's easier to criticize than it is to praise, and what Kyle Shanahan has done for the better part of his tenure here is completely overhaul a roster, instill or install rather a unique scheme that is effective, get the players around him that will be able to run the scheme, get his team to buy in to sharing the ball and not being egomaniacs, uh, egomaniacs about touches and catches and win at a very high level. So if you want to look at the last game and say, well, that you have to be able to win that game for me to really like you. Well, then you're going to be somebody who's impossible to please. Well, I'm just trying. Well, a lot of fans are impossible to please. I'm, I'm trying to put our minds back to where we were a year ago because the Niners had gone to the NFC title game. They had lost that one in a way that is much less the, I'm going to use air quotes here, coach's fault. The quarterback gets knocked out in well, the first quarter. Some people will say that the play call was of atrocious. Of course, and there's you had always your back that. backup tight end <laughs> I mean, protecting Brock Purdy. Yeah, uh, there, there's I mean, always how that. How could you? But remember the, the year Tyler Croft? But, uh, was it? I think so. Uh, anyway. I can't even remember. Yeah, whoever. So, but uh, remember the arc of that whole year. You didn't just get to the NFC title game. You did it with Brock Purdy, who opened the year as QB three. Remember where we started that year? Kyle was apparently on a mission to get Trey Lance hurt on purpose. There was that whole it worked. There, <laughs> there was that whole four weeks. Then there was Jimmy Garoppolo walking out of the back of the end zone in Denver. And that whole and remember preseason there where Jimmy's on Jimmy's on the kitty yeah, field yeah. and the tweet where like, oh my God, they're keeping him. Like all of that stuff had happened that year, but it seemed to recover. Because in comes Brock, and you're like, what? I mean, the season was supposed to be over as soon as he got the keys. Yeah. 
and you ended up in the NFC title game. So that reaction that we heard was coming off of that. You're arguing that this year's sound should be even better? Absolutely. Okay. Because of what he did last year and what he did following that year with Brock Purdy getting healthy. You know, he brought in Darnold for insurance, and then Brock gets healthy, and we weren't sure if he was going to be able to go from week one until about midsummer, and then he was on course, and he was on pace, and everything was building toward them being good, and then they were good, and they started out 5-0. and And even after the three-game losing skid, including the scheduled loss, and I've got one uh, to share a little bit later. I shared it yesterday. You shared it yesterday. I'll share it again. Yeah. But even after that, you go 5-3, and three, you recover and just lose the one game on Christmas, and then the who cares game in the end, and then you win two games and you go to the bowl. So I don't know how you can look at what he's done just the last two years with all the adversity you're talking about. And some of it was self-inflicted. The whole Trey Lance thing, he didn't have to go out of his way to do that. And then that blew up in his face, but he got rescued by Purdy. And the rest of it, back-to-back -back years, you were able to do things that usually teams aren't able to do. So I don't know how you, you don't cheer for Kyle Shanahan today. I, I appreciate you looking at me while you were talking, but you couldn't see uh, certain members of our audience here when you referred to a scheduled loss really started shaking their heads. They, okay. did not, they, did not, they did not enjoy that at all. Can I give you 30 seconds on scheduled loss? Do whatever you want. You're one of the hosts of this show. Well, normally I'm on a tight leash, but it's a field trip. Well, it's like, like we, don't I, nod to that knee. I'm in a good mood today. Go I ahead. I appreciate you, it. You may speak. It's like the third grader in a field trip who's just out of control. That's kind of how I feel today. Uh, they have four games against teams that are coming off a of bye, including Buffalo, when the Niners will be on the road the previous week at Green Bay. Buffalo will be chilling on a bye. The Niners go to Green Bay, then to Buffalo. Buffalo will be on a seven day, a 14-day rest. The Niners will be on a seven. When you look at the schedule, that's set up to be a loss. That's a scheduled loss. I'm giving them the L. I feel like you Sorry about that. put too much importance on people coming off of a bye. Like, isn't it odd that when we get to the playoffs, teams coming off of a bye is considered, like, dangerous. You're going to be rusty. But when it happens in the regular season, you give them an automatic win. Not automatic. Kind of. Well, it just You depends. bring it up a lot. Well, I bring it up because the previous week to the Green Bay game, they face Seattle, rival, and Seattle's coming off a bye. So that schedules out to be a difficult game. Difficult game, Lambeau in November, Buffalo in December off a of bye. Those things stacking up. And see, Mark, don't you get it, as I do my Steiny? Niners can it's, do hard things, Dibs. They can. They can do hard things. And they oftentimes they do. Yeah. Yep. And, you know, they've got Kansas City, and they've got Dallas off a of bye. And so they, they have a bit of a gauntlet. I think when they get to the end of that gauntlet, <laughs> Dallas, Buffalo off a of bye, that becomes a very difficult game. Sure. They're I mean, allowed look, to go 17-0. I mean, no, no, Only no. one team at. Yeah, Buff Buffalo is, is good. Like, going to Buffalo, I don't care if they yeah. played the day before or they haven't played for a month. Going yeah. to Buffalo is going to be hard. Going to Green Bay is going to be hard. They've got Dallas. They've got Kansas City. That's totally fair. If somebody does want to look at the Niners' win total, and I've been asked this question, like, would you take the over or the under? Um, I say this as a huge 49er fan with all optimism. I would bet the under. I would bet the under, and that, that's, that's solely because of math and historical data. Like, you, you, like in order to beat an 11-and-a-half game win total, everything's got to go so right, like it did last year, where you only ended up a half game higher than that. But this year, the schedule is harder. We don't even know what the injuries are. Like, if you're asking me, is it more likely that they end up with 11 or less versus 12 or more, I do think it's more le more things can happen that would lead it to 11 or less. Agreed, and especially when you look at last year when, from a health standpoint, and I was thinking about this on the drive down, if I graded their health status on a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being nobody got hurt, nobody had a sniffle, 1 being, oh, my God, it was a decimated roster, they probably were at a 7.5 or an 8. And the big point off of that is Dre Greenlaw in the Super Bowl. Yep. Because if Dre Greenlaw doesn't get hurt, I believe – they win that game. He was playing like an absolute madman. Gosh. He was a problem for Kansas City. And I think if he plays four quarters, you don't need a fifth quarter. You win the Super Bowl. So for me, <laughs> that one blow of health is worth a lot in the overall scheme. It's literally, I think, of all the look back at the Super Bowl things, it's the most painful one. It re when you say that, because yeah. it's like if a guy gets hurt playing football, 
fine. But you're, you're literally saying that the Niners lost the Super Bowl because Dre tried to walk onto the field. It's just mind-boggling. Hey, it's mind-boggling. He was just trying to run on out there yeah. and, and tackle somebody yeah. on the next play, and he did that little split step. You know, I mean, you start to run, you go split step, and you push off the back foot, and then, ah! I mean, we've all it. seen yeah. the Kyle Shanahan video now yeah. where he, like, looks at his assistant coach. He's like, did Dre just get hurt running onto the field? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, he did. Yeah. Badly. Yeah, and I do think that those – factors are much more important for a team going back to the Super Bowl than some cockamamie statistical hangover like you were talking about. And we can go through every Super Bowl going back to the Bills when they lost four straight. The teams that lose the Super Bowl more often than not were one-offs. They aren't that good. The Cam Newton Carolina Panthers. Yeah, not that a great good run. Yeah. Not that good. This team is good. They've got supreme talent and I'm going to ask Greg Cosell at 3 o'clock just what he sees on the film about this talent. Well, I mean, think about now, again, they've only been to two Super Bowls, I say only, but go back the last five years of 49er football and use this same idea. Oh, things didn't work out, so that means this year will be bad. Well, how's that going? Four out of five years right. they've ended up in the final four. So actually, and the one year they didn't, they had no quarterback. That's right. And actually, some of the years that they did, they had to use four quarterbacks two seasons ago and still ended up in Philadelphia with a chance to go to the Super Bowl. So there are moments where I look at it like that and I go, God, unless unless something really bad happens, they should be there in the end. Should be. I just think that there, there's so much, though, this year about the NFC that we don't know yet. I look around that conference, and it's the point I was trying to make yesterday, where I think there's only two or three teams that you can really just eliminate and be like, that's just not a good football team. Yeah. New York Giants, Carolina Panthers. Outside of that. Maybe Minnesota. Maybe Minnesota. I think everybody is either good or it wouldn't surprise me if they were. Yeah. Like, there's teams like Chicago, and now all those NFC South teams. Atlanta's got a quarterback now, and the Bucks have a really good defense. And look within their own division. Kyler Murray, a, a year removed from injury. Rams have a scary receiving core. Coaching is all different in Seattle. That's an interesting group. Like, I do think that this is going to be a harder mountain to climb because that's, that's another way to look at last year. You ended up in the Super Bowl. You won an NFC that nobody thought really had any good teams. And in both of your playoff games, you still almost lost anyway. Exactly. And I, I was thinking on the drive down about what you need for any team in any sport at any level to win a championship. And you need talent, coaching, culture, health, and breaks. Last year, just in this conversation, they got some breaks. And, you know, winning the number one seed in the regular season, that's not a break. You earned that. But the two teams you did beat, you beat a Green Bay team that was young and having their first little taste, and you beat a Detroit team that had a head coach I who mean. was kind of self-immolating <laughs> a little bit. And so, Any other breaks when you say that? There's, you got there's, the last break you got you didn't capitalize on. Which was? A down year Patrick Mahomes. They, if you want to talk oh, about Sky Moore and a rookie Rashi Wright <laughs> and a defense that was good but not like – the Monsters in Midway now. Like they're in the Top other conference, the so I don't worry about anyone in the other conference till, until late the, in the year. But if I were an AFC team, yeah, I, I'm with you. I'd be really bummed that the Chiefs won last year. Right. Because on paper, the things that that offense didn't do well last year, they fixed. They yeah. fixed them. Well, and he's, also, got, he's got more weapons this year than he did last year, for sure. Correct. And just last year, if you want to talk about breaks, one of the breaks Kansas City got was Baltimore forgetting that they were a run first football yeah, team. Yeah, that was a weird so game. So Baltimore abandons the run, and, you know, Mahomes, didn't they crush Kansas City, and then they went to Baltimore, and they had, like, that, that's a game that Baltimore should have won. Baltimore's looking at the Niners thinking, we owned you once, we're going to beat you again. I think Kansas City's road was the snow game against Miami. Right. And then I did Two road second, games. Yeah, the road. Did they go to Buffalo? They did they go, go to, to Buffalo. Buffalo yeah, good call. Good and call. then and they they grind one out over Josh Allen, and then and then they go to Baltimore, and they start fumbling the ball at the one yard line yeah. and all, all of yeah. that stuff. I yeah, I still think Baltimore. Well, I can't wait for tomorrow night. I think Baltimore is as good. I think they are every bit as good as Kansas City. No doubt. They might be more well balanced 
quite frankly, than Kansas City even. And the whole thing about, you know, Lamar, is he ready to win the big one? I think he was last year, but for whatever reason, the play calling and the decision making and, you know, they got into such a pass happy mode, I think that it really prevented them to have the chance. So Kansas City got breaks. The Niners definitely got some breaks, but you do need some things to go your way. A couple of ball bounces. Maybe you face a team whose quarterback is out. That's the kind of thing you need to go back-to-back. Back. Uh, Willard and Dibbs with you. It is Red and Gold Summit, Fremont Bank, Fremont Boulevard, 39150, the address. You can come see us. Free to get in. First come, first serve. Greg Cosell is going to be on in 10 minutes. Senior producer, NFL Films. Breaks down the matchups like no one else. You see this all over social media now. This is the OG. This is the guy who's been doing it for a long, long time. I can't wait to have him on, and we'll do that in 10 minutes. We played for you last year's Summit's reaction to Kyle Shanahan. Let's play one more for you. This is when we took the crowd through the idea of who's the most important 49er by a show of noise. So, Grandy, let's hear that one from last year's Red and Gold Summit. By a show of applause, <laughs> is the most important player Brock Purdy? Wow, I'm just, wow. Is the most important player Debo Samuel? Uh, well, uh. How about Christian McCaffrey? Yeah. Okay. Wow. Wow. Nick the Bosa. Boys. Wow. Yeah. George, George Kittle. Wow. <laughs> wow. Fred Kenny. Warner. Fred Warner. <laughs> That, that felt like McCaffrey won. Yeah. Purdy two. Yeah. Bosa three. Debo four. Kittle five. Warner six. Okay. CMC. CMC. A couple things. Go one, for it. Old number 71 wasn't included. Trent Williams. And neither was number 11. Neither was we, number we've 11. We've just been screaming and yelling for two months about two players that didn't even make our list last year. Are we going to reprise the bit? And if we do, Probably I, I want Spencer Burford to at least get one mention. <laughs> Maybe not. We could do. We could, I mean, we could do that again and yeah. add Brandon and Trent into this whole thing. Audience participation is always good. How did you? Well, I mean, how would you answer that? Would you adjust your answer? From, you know my answer. Your answer is, oh, Brock. My <laughs> answer is the quarterback, <laughs> know, no matter who it is. I'm just kidding. I had it's, a whole sonnet plan. Yeah, but I, I like get it's, into it. it's completely an unfair question. It is. It I is. mean, it's like, of course, Christian. Here's how I'll answer McCaffrey. McCaffrey is the most important running back in the league. He is the most important running back in the league. But if you asked me, especially now, I think part of that answer last year came from people's wackadoodle thought that Sam Darnold would come in and the team would look exactly whoa, the same. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Do it again this year and tell me, if I had to yank one of them guys off the field Monday night, who are you more comfortable with? Jordan Mason as the running back or Josh Dobbs as the quarterback? Well, the correct Brock Purdy's the most important the player on this football Trent team. Trent Williams is the most important person. He's on this incredibly team. important. So He's when incredibly they need important. a yard, they go Trent's way. When they need somebody to get absolutely run over by 360 pounds of multimillionaire, they call his number. I'd still take the the combo of Brock Purdy and Jalen Moore over Josh Dobbs and Trent Williams. Give me no Dobbsy. question. No question. Can't be Dobbsy. Dobbsy, stop it. I was on Darnold last it. year, too. And you better you better be careful what you say about Sammy D now. Why? You're, you're going to his him house. Week two? week two. His house. Boom, boom. Does he even? Uh, he's renting. <laughs> yeah. Come on. You're going man. into his condo oh, that now. Guy, that, guy, <laughs> that, that guy's in an Airbnb. If you take out the quarterback, because that's an easy answer, that's a layup. It's the, it wasn't the, for you last year. You fought me on that all year long. It's because, A, we need content, and, B, <laughs> your guy Brocky Poo is coming off a severe elbow injury. Yeah, yeah. We you, didn't know if he could throw. You, you didn't know. You had no faith. You're going to bed None. at night gazing longingly at his MRI. You don't know what I have on my <laughs> ceiling. You don't know what, I, what poster I have above my Willard. bed. Exactly. Oh, boy. He was fine. He was fine, No, yeah. but that I do. Like, look around the league. Why are we paying $55 million yeah. for people? Christian McCaffrey doesn't even make 20 That's a shame. Trent Williams just had to fight for a month and a half to get to 27 Brock's going to make more than twice that or whatever. We'll yeah. see. But, like... Yeah, come on. Brock Purdy's the most important player on this football team. He's The quarterback is the most important person on every football team. And we could play the 32-team game maybe when we get to you know, May or June when things are slower. We could talk about what NFL team does not have their quarterback 
as the most important person. So for me, you look beyond the quarterback, and then it becomes a more nuanced conversation about Trent or CMC or Bosa or Fred Warren, the quarterback of the defense, or you know, however you want to have that discussion. But yes. It's Brock. It's every quarterback. It's Daniel Jones in New York. No. It's Geno Smith in Seattle. Yeah, it is Daniel Jones, and that's why the Giants aren't going to be any good. Right. It's, that's why it's they're not Caleb Williams good. in Chicago. It's that simple. If Caleb is really good this year, they've got a chance to be great. Which is why I will reboot my point. Is there's another thing I don't want to hear this year, and I'm going to lose this battle because we're going to hear it all the time. But Probably it, today, too. That, absolutely, that the window is closing. Mm. And if the window is closing, I firmly, like I will drive to Parag's office, and I will tell him, do not re-sign this player. Do not bring him back. I do not want Brock Purdy on the team anymore at all if you're telling me that the window is about to close because you're signing him. That, to me, is crazy. Why would you do it then? Right. Like, it, it, the fans are acting like the Niners are walking the plank as if they're forced to sign Brock Purdy and end their reign. You have a 24-year-old quarterback, highest-rated quarterback in the league last year. If that's not the start of a window, I don't know what is. Well, their window is like the window here at Fremont Bank, Mark. And if you look to your right at this quote-unquote window, <laughs> ain't no window, bro. You walk straight out. It's got to be about 14 feet by 7 feet, and it is wide it's open. Wide open. I, knew like I knew you I were going to start it. singing Creed. Because you hate when I go I Creed. Knew it. Think about other teams whose windows are not closing despite having a heavily paid quarterback. Green Bay. None of them. And Baltimore. I'm None just thinking about the recent examples, and yeah. this is why. Baltimore is widely seen as the best drafting team in the NFL. They crush the draft every single year. And they replenish. And Green Bay is now doing the same thing with Dobbs and all the rest of the youngsters that they drafted. That's what Kyle and John have to do. And they may have already started down that road. Yeah. I, see, that's the thing. They, they have to do that. And they have already done that. That's how they got here in the first place. I think one of the most interesting conversations that's ever been shared publicly with things that went on behind the scenes with the Niners is to go all the way back to Kyle Shanahan's interview for the job when he looked directly into the eyes of the current regime and said, your roster sucks. <laughs> I mean bad. Get me John Lynch and we'll fix it. And here we are. It's a bold strategy in an interview. It is. Yeah. <laughs> it is. Where do you see yourself in 10 years? Here. <laughs> do you? Or the other one is, Kyle, do you have any questions for us? Yeah. What the hell are you guys yeah. doing? Exactly. Tom Sula? Exactly.